Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the UR Pod Usage Rate. I'm back with my good friend Bazza today to have a look on NBL Blitz starting day. Got some players to watch over the Blitz in the uh, world of Supercoach. So we're going to have a look through the teams one by one, mate. And then uh, we'll give people a, a bit of an idea about uh, who who we think are probably the main few to watch. How are we going? Yeah, I'm going well. I've, uh, I've changed my team about 16 times over the past uh, three, four days leading into the Blitz. I'm pretty <laughs> happy with it, but I am nervous what this Blitz is going to do to my team. So It could change yeah. another 16 times. I hope it doesn't because I'm pretty happy with it. So Yeah, um, I'm... I quite like your how your team's sitting at the moment also. Yeah, but we'll obviously get that out to the, to the group later. Um, but, yeah, we'll find a bit of a chat now and see how we're looking. Yeah, so um, before we get into it, uh, we do have a special fantasy or special super coach sponsor. Uh, one of my very good friends uh, lives over in WA, runs a hot sauce business. So Jibber's Hot Sauce. Uh, have a look at them on Instagram. Um, they are running some of the best hot sauce going around. Multi-time award winners. They, they're going to run, my mate Jibber, he's going to run a 15% discount code for anyone tuning into any of the episodes. So you are 15 is the hot sauce discount code. So go and check that out. Um, and also for the people that are in the you are, um, Super Coach League, there's a two hundred and fifty dollar prize pack uh, waiting there for the winner from Jibber as well. So big time, stiff competition. I'm in it and I'm happy with my team. So yeah, it yeah. should be a tough comp to win. I reckon. I, I'm nearly back myself for the sauce over the car. I reckon I probably prefer to get my hands <laughs> on some more of that stuff. All right, <laughs> so um, let's start off with. The Adelaide 36ers, mate. So who are the players that you are going to be keeping a really close eye on over the Blitz? I think there's the the one which everyone's going to be keeping an eye on, um, Flowers. I think yep. Trenton Flowers is going to be one which you and I both spoke about a little bit. Um, mentioned to you before we come on about the ESPN article that I read around yes. here and some questions to ask, which... Sound quite interesting. So it wasn't actually the report I was looking for. Um, I thought that Flowers was going to come in with be quite a high prospect, and they were more going to talk about his um, five star NBA recruit um, guy that he's been given. But instead, they mentioned that he's originally a forward, and they're trying to transition him to being a point guard, hoping for similar results to kind of what they did with Giddy. Um, and it kind of sounded like in the preseason games, he struggled as a point guard to bring the ball at the court um, against full court pressure and also had a fairly high turnover rate. So that was interesting oh. to read. I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be full of praise. Um, I thought he was a person that I locked in on my team. I thought I'll watch this guy um, move up the ranks. He's a cheap price. He's uh, 115k. I thought he's going to be starting. He's going to average some really good points, but um, yeah, kind of from that report, uh, kind of was a bit negative. So I wasn't expecting that, but it's definitely um, definitely one I'm going to watch because I think he's got a lot of potential. Yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting because all the all the kind of news that's been out so far has been that he's going to not be handed the keys so such, but he's um, yeah. going to be starting point guard, and it's been like he's he's ranked 11 on the mock draft. So to hear that. Come out. That's going to be a really interesting watch, um, especially with their guard rotation with um, Jason Kadee, Mitch McCarron, and Jamal Franklin there as well. So, could, yeah, uh, and I quite could be very interesting. I don't have him. I don't have him listed down as, but I, I was quite a big fan of um, Kadee, and he had a good NBL one as well. So yeah, if the flowers, if, yeah, if flowers experiment doesn't work, they've got a they've got a backup veteran there that they know what they're going to get out of it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And he's been a very good player for a very long time. Um, so, yeah. um, on the topic of guards at Adelaide, I'm pretty keen to see what Jamal Franklin can do. He's uh he's put up some video game numbers, um, in his career. He's a proven point scorer, but some reports also coming out around him that 
Um, he may not be the player that perhaps they thought he was when they brought him over. So trouble in Adelaide already for the sounds of things. <laughs> Yeah, deja vu. It was it was interesting. Yeah, before coming on here, we obviously did a bit of research around him, and uh, yeah, there was he was putting up fifty one point triple doubles. He was having a quadruple double uh, as well. Yeah, um, it was also the turnover rate was huge. So um, he was averaging yeah upwards of three, and in some games having five or six. So yeah, that could really hurt his score. Um, but also, yeah, I can't really see someone coming to the league and putting up 50 points. Oh, no, no chance. Um, but there was a, only a couple of, a handful of 40 point games last year, and they were bloody huge. Um, I think yeah, it's, like, it's, just, in. it's uh, significantly yeah. better than that Philippines league, I would say. I um, think so as well. Now, you're pretty big on Mitch McCarron. I um, am. Honestly, you, he can be. What are you hoping to see out of him? I just think he's a bit serviceable. You know what you're going to get. And I think that he can cover the box score um, a variety of ways. So I don't think he's going to get you the big points, but I think that he can definitely serve you in the rebounds and assist categories um, with kind of the low low turnovers. So I think that's yeah. good for a bit of a shooting guard position to give you a bit of a range. I know from fantasy in the past, if you rely on a player just to target one category, it never goes well um, because they obviously have a bad game. You don't really have any backup. But for him to have those other two categories to rely on, I think that that really helps you out. So that's why he's um, just on my watch list. Um, But yeah, with the the Flowers article I read and with Mm -hmm. the Franklin stats I've read, um, I think that, yeah, just he's probably a little bit of stability, um, which is probably not a bad thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, We'll move down the list. We've got, uh, got their other import. Um, Jacob Wiley noted down as well. Uh, he's obviously played in the NBL before, so he's pretty familiar with that. Um, they look pretty thin on the front line. Um, so part of my strategy is around targeting the imports. Um, I think I think they come in at a pretty generous sort of price range um, of two seventy seven. So um, for for the imports that are just playing the one game in the first week, break even of twenty four. Um, and then if they're playing two games, 48. So I think that's pretty generously priced if you consider what some of the guys um, who have been in the league before have, are sitting at. So um, Milton Doyle was obviously awesome last year and he went up to 344 and he's got a break even to 30. So um, I think just having that little bit less um, drop, they're going to be some players to sort of watch in terms of making some cash. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on him. Um, in terms of how many minutes he plays um, and um, how he sort of fits into their offense particularly. I think I know what he's going to do defensively, um, but really going to see how much they run through him on offense. Yeah, and yeah, right. They are pretty um, pretty thin in, in that area. Um, mm. So there's definitely going to be a lot of opportunity for him. Yeah, and that's, very that's kind of That's kind of why I highlighted Humphreys. Because yeah. um, I... I think he's a – you saw glimpses of it at Melbourne. I just don't think he got enough opportunity there. I yeah. think heading, heading to Adelaide, a fresh start, um, new system. I think he brings a fair few tools to that centre position. Um, and some of the games that I watched last year, um, he can rebound quite well, put up some points. I think you might get the occasional double-double out of him. So that's why if he can play good minutes, especially in the blitz, um, he'll definitely be someone that will be on my, on my radar. Yeah, good point. I do like that. He um he was pretty good when he was at Adelaide before he went to Melbourne. So uh, and he's and he obviously played a few NBA games as well. So he like the talent's definitely there. He's just got to be able to stay healthy. I think is going to be the biggest thing for him. But um, do he's someone that you're looking thinking that you can take a risk on, given that they play two games in each of the first two rounds. Yeah, I think. That's yeah. The schedule obviously favours you a little bit. So mm. if they kind of have that one bad game, you have got a bit of cover um, in that they do have another game to essentially make up for that. Um, or you can look at it essentially if they play a bad game, they're just bonus points that they get for that round. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we got five guys from Adelaide that we're going to keep pretty close watch on. So yeah, we, uh, we'll be pretty hot on their games. Yeah, well, I honestly don't think Adelaide can be too too crash hot at the end. Um, of the season. Um, 
So hopefully that can provide us with a bit of fantasy. Sometimes mm-hmm. bad teams, good fantasy players. Um, hopefully it's not a case of bad team, bad fantasy. Yeah, just get bums in seats, guys, and put the numbers up. <laughs> yeah, oh, get that home crowd that. back. Yeah, it sucks. All right, we'll leave that one there. And uh, next up we'll have Brisbane, the Brisbane Bullets.